Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the UFC Charlotte card from a betting perspective. Again, if uh, you missed uh, my breakdown last week, uh, I don't even remember doing it. Um, it was kind of a tough week for me in general, uh, just personally, and I was able, to, I think I was able to get a betting breakdown up. I honestly don't even remember. Uh, but we did pretty well. We did well DFS-wise and in betting. We didn't do quite as well. But nonetheless, we are going to move on to this weekend at, uh, in Charlotte. And keep in mind, it is a early start time. I think it's something like 11 or 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. So if you want to get your action in, you know, make sure you're aware of that. And again, you know, when we do these betting breakdowns, um, we, we always take a contrarian approach. And the reason for that, and again, and I apologize if this is not your first time and you have to listen through this. But this is kind of my philosophy of how to deal with all types of wagering, whether it be wagering on basketball games, MMA fights, or uh, the stock market, for example, which is obviously the source of the majority of my, uh, my wealth over the last 20, 25 years. But nonetheless, the, the concepts are the same. And, and one of, the, one of the, the, the goals of this project is to hopefully teach as many people as possible just kind of different ways of, of analyzing, of analyzing things, not just, you know, looking at numbers and saying, boy, I, I feel as though this is a good bet or looking at uh, a narrative and say, oh, it seems to make sense. But to think a little more critically and a little more, I don't know, just uh, try to get a sense for what the hidden value might be, like wh where the public might be driving the price in the wrong direction and being sort of a natural contrarian. And that to me is the best way to get an edge uh, in situations like this, as opposed to just being that person that thinks that they're just smarter than everybody else. Um, I promise you that I, I'm not no smarter than anybody, for example, in the stock market or in sports betting or anything like that, but I do have an ability to, you know, to, to get a sense at least for where the public is. And as a result, to know exactly where the public is, it's a good is a good barometer for what sides are being kind of overvalued for reasons having nothing to do with their actual chances of winning. Um, so when we go through these picks and this analysis, it's not going to be something that you're used to, but this is what's worked for me for a long, 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 long time. And once you get used to kind of thinking about uh, wagers in this way, I think you're going to end up uh, doing a lot better for yourselves, not just on this card not just for MMA, but in all of wagering life. So with that bit of nonsense, I guess, behind, um, listen, nonsense to you is really important to me. So that's, can I tell you? Let's just get right to it. So Jessica Rose Clark against uh, Tynera Lisboa. So it, it seems as though there's, there's, there's quite a bit of bias now towards these Brazilians that are just be, just coming into the UFC fighting these kind of middling fighters that we're used to kind of struggling with. Um, and it's just only natural that, you know, that, that as a optimistic person, you know, you, you want to think the best of people, you know, if you don't know anything about them, but you have this Jessica Rose Clark, who's just basically been struggling for a while here in the, in the UFC. And you get this, this, this Lisbon or Lisboa who comes in with just all kinds of who, of who knows. It's only natural for people to, you know, want to think the best of the who knows, because you know that Jessica Rose Clark has been kind of, you know, just not that great. So between these two fighters, I think the public wants to want, wants Lisboa to be the side. So So what I'm feeling is that She's probably overvalued. There's just more money piling in on her that really doesn't have anything to do with her chances of winning, but more just to what people hope her chances of winning are. Um, so for me, I think there's a pretty, pretty decent inherent line value in playing the, the Jessica Rose Clark um, side of these uh, side of this. So right here you have Liz Boa is a minus 120, and she's been taking all the money all week. I'm just going to take Jessica Rose Clark. Uh, plus the plus the 100 i guess that's just straight pick them and just so you guys know again uh these are the rules we're gonna be betting literally everything that we recommend and i think that's actually pretty important <laughs> uh 
Um, and we'll, you'll see me do it right here live. And everything's going to be one unit. I'm not going to be, you know, that person saying 1.4 units on this point, eight units on this. And I guess it's probably not the greatest money management system in the world. But you know what? That's that's what we're going to do. And each unit's always going to be some really feeling really saucy. It's going to be like 180. So you'll see me put all these in. And you know, if you want to tell, if you want to bet along, I promise you this: that you're going to, you're not going to have the same card of bets as everybody else. You're going to be really uh, on on the right side of the psychology, maybe on the wrong side of the bet. But uh, this is definitely, I think, your best shot at having some fun with these fights and and having a pretty you know pretty decent edge. All right. Uh, moving on, we have uh, well, let's put this here. By the way, one eighty, Jessica Rose Clark. And you'll see that there's going to be a thing saying um, uh, bet 180 on each single. We'll get, well, you'll see what it looks like. Anyway, a Brian battle against Gabe Green. This one is kind of a tough one because I am seeing some love for both sides, uh, the Brian battle side and the Gabe Green side. So it, you're not, you're not getting any inherent line value on anybody, but what you are getting is, Kind of a weird sense from the community that this fight is just going to finish more often than it probably will. You're actually getting that in a couple of these kind of older, you know, fighter fights that you have this, this line that, you know, presumes that it's going to be kind of a decision, but people are just creating this like weird narrative that these guys are just going to just try to kill each other. And it's just going to be a lot more violent than the line is suggesting. So I feel as though, that the side, the sharper side, is to play this thing to go to the decision. So we're either going to take either one of these guys to go to the decision or just the whole fight to go to a decision. The one thing you could do is just go over 2.5, uh, minus 165. But let's just take a look at it. Um, Brian Battle, Gabe Green. Let's just see. Fight lines. That's, let's see. Fight props. All right. So to go the distance is minus 150. I think that's pretty safe. So let's 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 go do that. Fight to go the distance, minus the 150. I just think there's probably some inherent line value in that one. I just hear way too much talk about how you know this is going to be violent. People and these people are going to to finish, but I don't know. I, I'll just I'll just I'll just lay the 150 uh for 180 and we'll just kind of see what happens. All right, moving on, we have uh, Ji Young Kim versus Mandy Baum. I mean, this one to me is pretty easy. Um, you have Ji Young Kim, who is a minus 230. And I I think that throughout the industry and throughout the community, I think she's being picked about 30, 30 to 1. Um, I, I cannot find a single tout expert, analyst, whatever, that likes Mandy Bob here to the point where I'm, you're, 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 you're hearing them emphasize the name bum, like she's a bum. And to the point where they, they're not even giving her a path to victory. You know, it's not as if they're saying, well, if she can do this, then she can win. Not even that. They're like, people are saying that there's literally no chance she can win. As if she were like minus plus a thousand here. I mean, it's only a two to one underdog and she's being just kind of treated from the community. Like she's like a minus 10 to one. So I, Plus ten ones. So we're just going to take Mandy Bomb plus the one ninety five. How is she going to win? I really have no idea. But 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 um, plus one ninety five. Um, but I just feel there's got to be some inherent value in this. All right. Uh, moving on, we have Natan Levy versus Pete Rodriguez. Okay, I this one I just don't exactly get for a Pete. Natan Levy is a minus 245 favorite. So it's minus 225 kind of uh, after big. Pete Rodriguez has got to be the most popular underdog there is uh, in this week. Actually, there's a couple, and we'll get to them in a minute. And again, just because I say I'm being contrarian doesn't mean I'm betting all underdogs here. Um, sometimes the underdogs are the ones that are kind of just are overvalued. And I I'm, I'm getting a lot of this. I'm getting the Pete Rodriguez as fast hands narrative. I'm getting the Pete Rodriguez, well, you know, very well may have decent takedown defense, but we haven't really seen it yet. 
Um, so uh, there is no way I'm playing the, the, the Pete Rodriguez side. The one side that you're not hearing is the Natan Levy in round one. I mean, you're getting Pete Rodriguez saying, okay, he's got round one upside of the day. Tom Levy's just kind of take over. It's going to take over. Um, so the, the, the props, if you're going to play that way, which is what we're going to do here, that you can't bet is anything would say Pete Rodriguez in round one, because that's probably overvalued. You can't also bet the Tom Levy round two, round three, or even by decision, because those are probably bad value. The only thing you can do, you could either play the Tom Levy just straight up or – you could play Natan Levy in the first round, and that's going to be really, really nasty and tough to do. But, you know, I feel though I feel as though this is where the um, this is where the value is. So Natan Levy round one plus two hundred for one eighty. We are going to do that, and I'll tell you this: this looks like a terrible, terrible price. You know, given what Natan Levy's skill set is, basically grinding and wrestling and whatever. How is he possibly going to get this done in the first round where um, Rodriguez apparently has, has all the first round upside? Um, I mean, look at this, though. I mean, with all the talk about the Rodriguez first round upside, he's plus 700. So I'm, I'm going to take what's kind of the seeming seemingly bad price of the Tom Levy plus 200 round one, and we're just going to go for it. Tom mm -hmm. Levy round one or one. All right, uh, Carlos Ulberg versus Itor Pateria. Um, all right, there, there's only a couple of things you can do here. Um, first of all, we got Pateria coming off his last fight, and for a guy who had a first round KO, I, I haven't, I can't remember a fighter who's gotten trashed as much for a first round KO because he was fighting Shogun Hua. Who was you know, it was definitely his last fight. They they just don't give him credit for getting the first round KO. I mean, what what else did, did, did they want him to do? Um, yeah, he gave up some shots, but it's not like he was getting beat. I mean, he handled it pretty easily. So I, I don't know what the what the problem was. And, and Carlos Olberg, okay, he 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 got a first round KO. But I'll tell you this, I was at this fight, and he wasn't doing anything. I mean, really, like he wasn't aggressive or anything like that. So I don't I don't know exactly where all this. Carlos Ulberg is a lock is coming from. So we're going to try. We can do one of two things. We could either play Pateria to win, which is kind of nasty because it is an 85 cent line. Or what you can do is play Ulberg by decision. Um, I think that that's definitely live here. Um, and I definitely think that it's a decent price. So let's just take a look at these. Let's look at uh, winning method. Ulberg by decision is plus 400. I mean, I, I think I'm just going to have to try it. But wait a minute. What's better? Ulberg by decision or Poteria anywhere? You know what I mean? Like Poteria, I can get plus 400 on. So what's more likely? Poteria wins the fight or Ulberg wins specifically by decision? Um, let's put it another way. Which, which one is are people less likely to play? I think people, boy, it's close. And so funny, now you're, you're watching me struggle with this. You're like, you don't even know who you're freaking taking. That's the way it goes. You know, you just have to pick the right, the right bet. I think that the better, boy, maybe you should play both. Maybe I'll play Uber by decision and I'll play Pateria. Now, you know what? We're going to just play Pateria. Pateria to win plus the 340. Oh, my God. 85 cents we're giving up. Can we do that? Oh, that's terrible. Nah, it's it's way it, that's way too much big to give up. Hold on. Let's go back to the... If we don't know what kind of big we're giving up, with Uber by decision, you know what I mean? Because they're not telling you what about not, you know, that you can't play the other side of this. All right, we'll do freaking Uber by decision, whatever. Uber by decision for 180. Whip. 
All right, uh, moving on. Cody Stamen versus Douglas De Silva De Andrade. So we have um, uh, another very, very popular underdog here, uh, Douglas De Silva De Andrade. He just looks like a guy people you want to bet on. Stamen is someone who is kind of a wrestler that's not that aggressive, and it's just not the type of fighter that 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 referees like or openers. Excuse me, that uh, that judges like. So you're getting all this love on, on De Silva to Andrade. So we're just going to go ahead and play Stamen. But what would be really cool, I mean, if you wanted to play Stamen, instead of playing him by decision, play him inside the distance. And I think that's what we're going to do. You're going to get a lot of value on that because ain't nobody playing that. So let's see. Um, winning method. Now you could play him either. You could play him by submission plus 1,800. Oh. Or by TKO plus six hundred. I don't know. I, I let's just give him just just inside the distance in general. Winning method. Uh, so double chance here. Um, where is this? Double chance. So Stamen by TKO or submission plus five hundred. Let's do that. Perfect. I don't think people are playing this. There's got to be value there. Um, all right, moving on. Carl Williams versus Chase Sherman. Um, so you have a full-on consensus that Carl Williams is going to take the dude down, rinse and repeat, Chase Sherman sucks, and you have this battle of styles, which is impossible to overcome. Um, it's just a question in people's minds of whether Carl Williams can get that finish or not. Because he tends to kind of lay on his opponents when he gets the takedowns. So that's what you're getting. Those are your two choices, apparently. Either Carl Williams by decision or Carl Williams by by inside the distance. So if those are only two decisions, we're going to take Chase Sherman. Thank you very much. Chase Sherman plus 330 for 180. Let's go. I mean, he's a freaking, he's a basically has a 500 record in the UFC. I mean, how bad can he be? I mean, he's, he, we've, 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 bet, we've bet on worse heavyweights than Chase Sherman. I'll put it this way. And we have this other guy who has one UFC fight where, yes, he was able to get all the takedowns, but I don't know. He was facing no resistance at all. I mean, if Chase Sherman can just put up some volume and leg kick him and keep him off to the side, I don't know, 330? I will tell you this. I think they would like to give him a decision too. So uh, the, the 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 judges really don't like these wrestlers that don't do anything. So if Chase Sherman even gets taken down a few times but wins the striking battles, never know what these judges can do. And I want to be on the right side of that. So we'll take Chase Sherman plus 330. Uh, all right, Mark Bra Matt Brown versus Court McGee. All right, so it's another one. I don't know why people are just kind of inventing – Inventing narratives where they don't exist. I don't know. Like Court McGee can basically just take Matt Brown, Matt Brown down like all day long and win an easy decision here. And people are just trying to like make this so much harder. They're saying, I'm seeing narratives that these are old guys that are gonna make a gentleman's agreement to kind of throw down. And then they're saying that Court McGee in his last, you know, not this last fight, but a couple of fights ago, he had the opportunity to take a guy down who was easy and he didn't do it. Um but he lost. So why wouldn't he take the the path? It's more likely to win. I don't like I don't I don't see it. We're just gonna take Court McGee by decision and just kind of be done with it. Oh, let's see. Court McGee winning method by decision, basically even money. I, to me, this is easy money. Well, maybe, maybe I'm the sucker, but I'm serious. People are just really just overthinking this, I I, I believe. So we'll take Court McGee by decision for a way. Uh, okay, Tim Means versus Alex Barono. Um, I was afraid. I see. I I already was kind of predisposed to what I was going to do in this fight, and then uh, I thought that the entire public was going to be on it, so I'd have to fade it. But it turns out that throughout the week, you know, what we're getting we're getting like more kind of like sneaky. Sneaky love for Tim Means. 
I don't, I don't know why, but but for me, we're just gonna fade that. We're we're gonna we're gonna take Alex Morono. We're gonna play him inside the distance, either in one particular round or or just overall inside the distance. We're just gonna just kind of figure out where to go. Um, so let's just see first of all. So Morono by KO plus three hundred by submission plus six fifty. This is possible. The only problem with this one is this particular prop has been just kind of, kind of just laid out there a little bit too often um, this week, so I can't really do that. You could play him by TKO. What you might be able to do, let's see if I can get an actual round. This is going to be really tough. Morono round two plus six fifty, maybe even round one. Hmm. That's the thing. You usually get a much bigger jump from round one to round two. You're not really getting that. So there's no real value in like round two. We're just going to go Morono in round one. Just hope we just steep balls him. Morono round one for 180. Oh, should we go round two? Now we'll go round one. Morono round one for 180. Right. Um, moving on. We have. Um, just a couple more, right? So Daniel Rodriguez gets Ian Gary. This is just this is as easy as it comes. Okay, like Daniel Rodriguez for someone who is like a, a three to one underdog has been picked by more touts and more experts than I can imagine. Ian Gary, every single fight he gets just no respect, and every single fight he just wins. Okay, so I don't know what what everybody's issue is with him. But we're just gonna keep on playing him inside the distance until he loses. So let's just keep doing it. Uh, Ian Gary, um, winning method. I'm, I'm not even going to get too fancy here. We're just going to go Ian Gary by TKO or submission for 165. I mean, sounds good to me. You know, I, I don't, I don't know why. Everybody just keeps on trying to fade this dude. All the guy does is win, and all the guy does is get his KOs. So Ian Gary plus the 165. Everybody else can be cute and play Daniel Rodriguez. Good luck. All right. Uh, moving on, we have – should have a couple – only two more, right? Maybe three? Let's see. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, just two more. Anthony Smith versus Johnny Walker. Um, this one, I, 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 uh, I know where the value is here. Um, you have Johnny Walker, who's really, really explosive. Um, and he's going to bring the heat and Anthony Smith also has a, he's a really, really good finisher. So I think what we're going to do here is we are going to just play this fight goes decision. Um, I think you're going to get a really, really big price on it. Um, Johnny Walker's prices, you just don't go to decisions. But you know what? Doesn't mean they won't. <laughs> so let's take a look. So Anthony Smith, Johnny Walker, uh, fight props. Fight goes the distance, plus 330. We're going to take a shot. And if we were, now, if we were really smart, actually, we would just take Smith by decision. So let's take. let's just take a look at that. Winning method. Smith by decision plus 600. Oh, let's go. That's no, oh, let's do that. You're kidding me. Yeah, so Smith by decision plus 600 for 180. Um, all right, and finally, we have the main event, which is uh, Jalton Almeida versus Jarazino Rosenstrut. Um, this one again is just seems kind of easy. So there's only one, two ways the fight can go, right? You have Almeida getting a bunch of takedowns and, and submitting or knocking out Rosenstruck, or Rosenstruck getting the, um, you know, getting has that death touch and getting the KO. Um, and the idea that this is five rounds is kind of ridiculous because this is going to finish one way or the other inside of two and a half. Well, that happens, we're going to lose. So we are going to take the over in this fight because it's, it's just the one thing that no one's predicting will happen. Now, if I was really, if I really had it in me, 
I would play something like Almeida by decision. But that seems just kind of rough. Let's let's take a look at some of these because I think that's the type of thing I want to do. I don't want to have Almeida by KO. I don't want to have, certainly don't want to have Rosenstruck by KO because that's, I think, you know, the kind of the square play. Um, let's just take a look at see some of these. So let's say we said, um, let's get to the right fight first of all. What is Almeida by decision? Almeida by decision is plus 900. Boy, I got a good mind. Or a bad one. Fight goes the distance is plus 650. But there's just, I don't just don't think there's a Rosen's troop by decision in there. So why don't I just play Almeida by decision? Or or the other thing I can do. Wow. I could play Almeida in either round three or round four for either 14. I can get 25 to one in round four. That's tough. Round three seems obviously a little more reasonable, but you're getting 25 to one. Remember, this is the path. This is what we're rooting for. We're rooting for what's his name to just survive. You can survive the takedowns long enough and then eventually just forget it. Either round three or round four. It's gonna be one of those, right? I don't I don't think it's gonna be I don't I think it's better to go for a round three or round four than to go the plus nine hundred for decision. So this is unfortunately where the OCD in me just kind of like clicks in because you know what I'm seeing? I'm seeing that Almeida round three is plus fourteen hundred. And 1,400 is going to make up for all the losses from every other fight, which we're going to lose. Plus a little one unit extra. So that's what we're going to do. I've made a round three plus 1,400. That, that doesn't get more analytical than that. Um, so it looks as though we're actually missing a fight. Let's just see. Um, so let's just kind of review. So we have Jessica Rose Clark for 180. We have... Battle goes, fight goes the distance, minus 150 for 180. We have Mandy Baum, plus 195 for 180. We have Natan Levy, round one, plus 200 for 180. We have Carlos Olberg by decision, plus 400 for 180. We have Stamen, inside the distance, plus 500 ah, um, for 180. We have Chase Sherman, straight up, plus 330. Let's go. We have Court McGee winning by decision. We have Alex Morono in round one. Good luck with that. Ian Gary, plus 165. Inside the distance, Anthony Smith, inside the distance, excuse me, by decision. And then, oh, here we go. There we go. 180 for Jelton Almeida, round three, placing 12 bets for $2,160. Let's go. Can we put this in? Let's see. Or is it going to make me, let's see if it makes me uh, wait. Yeah, checking location. All right, so I'm going to have to put this in after I stop uh, the video, which I will do right now. Good luck, everybody.